I can see the cub behind us. Oh no. They've stopped there, the rest of the troop. Can you see the male still? Is he still running? Now everyone, I know this is going to be a little difficult because what I don't want to do is create a situation where the leopard can't hear what's going on. So I'm turning the engine off and I'm just going to drive down here. Can you see anything? Yeah, I can see the male, the baboon's coming. You got the baboon there? Heard the baboon's in there. Oh, hang on, there's a fight going on in front of us. You got them? They've got the leopard. Okay, I'm going to go forward because the baboon's down here. And I thought I heard it. I hope it hasn't caught something. You see the baboon in the big marilla tree? Oh yes. There's the big baboon. That was that was the female, wasn't it? PMP, I think we saw Karula there. I'll sneak forward there. I'm not going to go off-road now. Oh dear, the leopard's up there. The leopard is up there. The baboon is trying to grab the leopard. I don't know which leopard that is, everyone. I'm shaking. Oh no, I think that's one of the cubs. Now everybody, if you are a sensitive viewer, well, we're all going to be sensitive about this. That, I think the female was below us. Here comes the rest of the troop now. And the leopard has taken the last resort option to try and get into the tree. I don't think that's the female. I think it is one of the cubs. Dungan. Okay, Aubrey's going to go in there. We're going to follow him. You got the leopard. There's a little cub running. Where did it go, Viam? I can't see. Okay, we're gonna go. It went left, hey? You can see the mother. I'm just gonna try and get into a bit of a clearing here, everybody, so we can see what's happening. I'm gonna get around the corner here. We've got to be very careful about where we drive here. We don't want to make a noise. We don't want to crash around. We've got to be very sensitive. This is horrible. This is really horrible. There's the baboons running to the right. Perfectly normal, everyone. It happens all the time. I'm going to move very slowly. I know it's frustrating that we can't see what's going on. Now, I will explain to those of you who are new viewers, perhaps, and you don't understand the relationship between these primates and the carnivores, I'll explain what's going on. But basically, a very big male baboon is, is too much of a challenge. Yeah, there's the 
youngster right up in the tree here. I don't know where the others have gone, but I think it's the big male who's in the, this tree with the little one. Okay, there we go. You can see it up there. There you can see the little leopard. I'm not going to get any closer than this. Oh, shame. All right, everybody. Let's just take stock here. You, Vim, you saw the female coming down here. You, we saw the other cub also coming into this area. Can't see them right now. I think you'll find, and I can't see the baboon. Is the big male still in that tree? I think he got out of the tree. So he's out of the tree. That's good. But he did try and grab her there. There we go. Here comes another baboon to the right hand side. Now big male baboon, the same weight just about as a female, not quite as a female leopard, but he's got massive canines, he's hugely powerful, he could seriously damage her. He would kill one of these cubs um, if he could get it, and he tried to grab that cub, and I don't know if he got hold of it, there was certainly a scuffle. And Aubrey has just seen the mother still running down, I think, to the south of us here. Now, you see, what do you do when you're trying to get away from a baboon? A baboon climbs as well as a leopard does. And the only advantage that leopard has right now is that of height. And it's easier to swat something coming up from the bottom than it is to grab something from the bottom. Now, the baboons are calling. The male is around here somewhere, but he's not gone after her again, so I think she's going to be okay. I cannot see what's going on here. I mean, that's tremendously exciting, but it's horribly stressful. I don't want to move just now. I just want to try and assess what's going on from here, everyone. Now, the little leopard at the top is looking a little bit more confident. You can see the ears are not so flattened against her head. Sorry, and I think you are right, viewers. You're saying this is Hassan. I think you're absolutely right. I'm just saying her. It's definitely the paler-eyed one. So it's, I'm sure it's the male. I think mum and female have headed off to behind where we are now. And I don't think we should move from here. I think we should stay exactly where we are and wait and see what transpires. Phew, that was horrid. I'm 99% sure that the other two got away. Mum definitely got away. I'm pretty sure that female would have got away too because if they'd got hold of one, there would have been an almighty scuffle. And I think actually, look, I don't know if he was hit. Oh, look at him. From such a peaceful, wonderful morning, things have turned horrid. I think that male almost caught him, and if if he may have actually made contact, because there was a, as VM saw the Karula coming down this way, I heard a scuffle on the ground, growling, and definitely a baboon making a, they don't growl, but they make a kind of throaty, almost roar. And I heard both of those things, and I'm sure the leopard was growling, and I'm pretty sure there was contact made, but a leopard is so fast.
A boon's very fast too, but a leopard's quicker. And he would have shot up that tree. Whew. Interestingly, I would also be fascinated to know what's going on at the kill site because I wonder if they won't go and scavenge that kill. They do eat meat, baboons. They're completely omnivorous. Now, the inevitable question also is why would a baboon do this? And it's the same reason that if there's a, a criminal in a neighborhood, everybody in that neighborhood will try and get rid of that criminal. And that's not to say that the leopards are criminals, but from a baboon's point of view, they are. They're predators. You don't want them around you. You want to give them a fright. You want to teach them a lesson. And that's what these baboons are doing. And they'll get their blood up. They'll feel tremendously confident, even the little ones. Now, Sarah, in Georgia, you say, is this something that happens every day and we just don't see it? No, it's not, Sarah. It's not uncommon, but it's not an everyday occurrence. Sarah, I think it probably happens, yeah, more than we think it does, but it's not an everyday occurrence. And this area that we're in now seems to be a very popular baboon spot. And it's quite close to Torchwood Camp, where there's water, and the baboons like to come down to that water for some reason. And it just goes to show the baboons are not, you know, they're not intent on doing harm. They're intent on getting rid of predators around where they are. So they've chased these cubs. They've chased all. They've chased all three. And they've now kind of relaxed. Whew. I don't feel very elated by that. I feel um, I feel very sort of distressed by it. Not quite scarred, but um, yeah, just stressed out by it. It's not nice to see, is it? I'm sure many of you are having exactly the same emotion. We see some tremendously exciting things out here, after which we go, yes, you know, it was kind of amazing and exciting and everybody feels happy. This is something quite different. I'd quite like to know from you guys how you are feeling. So maybe tweet us through one word. Tell us how this made you feel. Other than stressful, I'm sure it made you feel all stressful. There. I've got the female. I've just seen the female moving there. Well, no, it's not. It's a hyena. There's a hyena there. Uh, you won't be able to see it. Uh, VMP, let me move because we know where the leopard is. Aaron, you say this was scary. Yes, it was. It is scary. It remains scary. Guna misi la. Misi. Misi. I'm just telling Aubrey where the hyena is. Can you see it? Oh, the leopard. There's Karula, everybody. So that's not the hyena. We've got the leopard. Maki, you call. Maki, yeah, now Maki. They're calling. Calling the little one. The little one is not reacting yet. The hyena was a long way to the right of where she is now. I suspect she's left the female further back from where she is now, going up onto the termite mine. I'm going to move just so that we can get into a position that 
We can see Karula and the baby. But I don't want to... We obviously don't want to interfere. No, the, there is a hyena behind us. It's quite a long way away. It's a young hyena. But also, remember, compared to the baboons, those hyenas are no threat at all. They cannot climb. Whew. That's interesting. She's walked straight past the tree. Yeah, Teresa, you say nauseous is your word. I, yeah, there's a certain sense of that in me as well. She's going back to the kill. Yeah, I think she's heading straight back to the kill. I also think that this little one hasn't called her. Unless she knows the little one's here and is just kind of saying, well, stay there if you want to, but we can go back to the kill if you want to. Whew. The hyena, I'm just going to point out, we're not going to try and get a film up, but it's over there, basically where VM's pointing the camera. And it's been attracted, I think, by the noise. I don't think it would pick up the smell of the kill. And I don't know where the other little cub is. I thought I saw it heading down this way. Alright, I'm just going to let Aubrey move away and then we also will decide whether we're going to try and get a better view of the cub or leave the cub alone and go back with the mum. I think it will probably be the latter. There's the hyena. Uh, you see it there, Vimpy? It's just to the left of the bottom of this marula tree there. That mar oh, I parked you right in front of a stick. Let me just do, yeah, it's in there exactly where you, where you're filming, just to the right of that. There, it's moving now to the left. That's coming now. Got it, there we are. Now, Sean, you're wondering if the hyenas would chase the baboons. Uh, yes, because they're in a group, they are a lot braver. They can afford to be injured more than a leopard can. Remember, the big thing about what we're observing here. Sorry, quickly back to the leopard, VMP, it's coming out the tree. Um, Sean, a leopard cannot be injured. If a leopard gets injured, it cannot hunt, it will die. A hyena can afford to be injured, it lives in a group, it scavenges a lot more, and so it can take a more risks than a leopard can. Now, a hyena, the one like the one you've just seen, looks like a sub-adult male to me from this distance. It's going to struggle to ward off baboons, but it'll turn and fight much more than a leopard will. And I think you'll find that the reason the baboon didn't push home the attack on this little cub is that although it's only eight months old, it's about the size of, say, a large Alsatian, uh, a dog. It's, it's still formidable. I mean, you wouldn't want to try and catch one of those things. It would tear you to pieces. And so although the baboon was happy to give it a fright, he would have thought twice about actually engaging in a full-pitched battle. leopard is not going to come out because the hyena is just over there. It's coming closer and closer towards us now and there is no danger now to the leopard from the hyena. The hyena is utterly innocuous as a threat in comparison with those baboons. You can smell something is up. 
doesn't know what's gone down here, has heard the alarm calling baboons. That's probably what uh, attracted it into this area in the first place. I don't think it spotted the leopard. The leopard has definitely spotted the hyena. I can see it watching the hyena. So it's fully aware of that threat but it's completely safe up in the tree now. The baboons have moved off, so Horsana is fine. And like I say, if there had been contact between the baboon and the leopard, we would have known about it. So I think everything's okay. That's right, he's now, that base of the tree on the right-hand side of your screen is exactly the tree that Horsana is sitting in. <laughs> hyena is behind the eight ball here it knows something has gone down but it's not quite sure what so nice to see a hyena here you know I've missed them so much since their den moved little leopard. God, didn't he look miserable with his little ears flattened against his head up top there? I just wanted to give him a bit of a cuddle. Like I say, you don't want to be cuddling a little leopard. Now you're all quite stressed still about Shongile. I think Shongile is fine everybody. I'm pretty sure that she made it away. There would have been much more of a scuffle if the baboons had actually got hold of her. This is the one that the big male focused on, and therefore I'm pretty sure that the female, I'm 90% sure that the female got away. She might actually be back at the kill with mum. What do you want? What do you want? Tobias, a good one from you about baboons and whether they have claws or if it's just the teeth that you have to worry about if you happen to be a leopard that's being chased by them. Uh, they've got nails, like we've got nails. They're not quite claws, but they'd be sharper than a dog's claws, for example, and they do quite a lot of damage. So they do use those, but they've got teeth that are longer than a leopard's canines. And I've got a skull, we've just bought a skull, and the next time you come into the tent with us, I'll show you the size of an adult male baboon's teeth. They're terrifying. They're that big. They're razor, razor sharp. They're not, some of the leopard's teeth are slightly blunted from biting on bone. Remember that a baboon doesn't bite on bone much. It's purely for defense. So there are these razor little spears in the, in the baboon's face and they are, well, they're terrifying and that's why the leopards are so reticent to go after them. Young male leopards sometimes kill baboons and this chap's probably going to take his revenge when he goes independent. Females, they're too experienced, they don't go for it. And even big males like Anderson and Tingana, they'll avoid baboons. Baboons will be afraid of them, but there's easier stuff out here to kill than baboons. He's still up there. Ah, thank you, Chris. Well done. You've, I've forgotten all of these hyenas. You've been obviously observing these hyenas for a long time. You say that is Ribbon, the clan male from our clan of hyenas, so that's great. I thought he looked, he had one rather familiar spot on his right shoulder. Um, but thank you very much for confirming that. So it is a male and his name is Ribbon. Thanks for that, Chris. Okay, we're going to move. Let's just go, I'm going to get try and get a a little loop around to that side we'll get a view of him I don't want I'm not going to hang around with him and we are also going to go and just do a little loop to the south and I'll try and get hold of Aubrey just to find out where the others are in fact let's go straight out this way Yeah, curious one, you say, can I hear the baboons still? No, I can't, they've gone, I think. I don't want to hang around here. Aubrey, do you copy? Hmm. 
Forbes confirm um, Kurula has gone back to the kill. I'll try and put Aubrey on. Okay, copy that. I haven't seen the other youngster, just the male there. Um, I'll come back to you if I can. Are the confirm honey vehicles there? We're not going to go back to Karula. I think there, there are too many vehicles there at the moment. Okay, copy. I'll, we'll try and come back later. No problem. Um, it seems that there are too many vehicles there at the moment. We've had an amazing sighting. So what we'll do is just do a little turn around here and see if we can't see the female. All right. Why are we doing that? And catching our breath and letting our heart rates go down. Well, a little bit. Let's head across to Steph. He's got an elephant. Well everybody, he's chilled out. He's in the same tree. We did a brief loop around to see if we could find the female. We haven't managed to find her. We're going to have another look now. But Hosanna is now relaxed. He's okay. He's just taking stock of the day. His heart rate slowly starting to drop. I can confirm that Karula is back with the kill, but she's on her own. And she's okay and not looking stressed at all, so I think you'll find that everything is all right. We are going to have a brief look for Shongile. And as Viam said, not easy to spot them in the trees. But you can see he's okay there. He's perfectly relaxed. In fact, he's going to sleep, which he deserves at the back end of his real adrenaline rush. Look at that. Yeah, Sheila, I agree with you. You say things like this really bring home what a good mum Karula has been. You know, there are huge, huge dangers, huge trials. It's not easy raising cubs out here. Shadow is a testament to that. I mean, there could be other issues with Shadow. But yeah, Karula's 10th baby is here and well on their way to independence. And the little one up there, now very much relaxed. He's full of food, so he's going to be fine. He's going to come down a bit later. I don't know that he'll come down on his own with us here. So, although he doesn't look like he wants to come down, we're not going to sit here for long before we head off. And Catherine, I agree with you as well. You say Shungile will be okay. You're sure of it. I'm pretty sure of it too. Let's go and have a look. Now, what I think Viam and I saw, we think, was Shungile basically off to the right-hand side there where I'm pointing, running down this way. That's certainly what Karula did. And I think one, we're pretty sure we saw two leopards going that way. So we'll just do a little loop around there and see if we can't spot her. Give me a little bit of a crunch here as we go over this dead tree. Oh dear. There goes the virtual... Oh. Um, fish tail it. I've got the virtual reality rig now very solidly stuck on a knobthorn tree and forward or back is going to destroy it. Mm. You can't take it off. There's a leopard in the tree. <laughs> um, we might have to link away if we can. Is there any way we can get away from here, Kirst? We've got to get this camera off the front. That's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. We've managed to do it. It's okay. We're all right. Phew. Luckily, it's a cheap piece of equipment on the front there, hey, Vim? Okay. This is a bit of a hangy bit there. It's a bit worrying. Oh well. 
I'm just he stood up and he's looking this way, which is not where his mum is. Maybe he can see a baboon somewhere around here. Now these marula trees would be ideal for a little female leopard to be hiding in. So we'll just do a very gentle, slow loop through here. We don't want to escalate any situation. Yeah, Jason, I'm not surprised and absolutely I understand. You say you had to stop watching because uh, you thought you were going to have a heart attack and you actually you don't know what happened. Um, right, let's have a little recap. Jason, I'm not going to look at you while I'm talking to you because I'm just going to try and see if we can spot the leopard in the trees here. Um, Jason, what happened was a baboon troop just happened by here and I'm just listening to a game that I've operate. Okay, just, just, it was just an update on Karula. She's moved the kill under some cover, so that's good. Uh, Jason, the baboons just were feeding. They came along and then they caught w sight and smell of the leopards and they gave chase. And that's what baboons do. As I said, it's a bit like the neighborhood watch, chasing a gang of criminals out of the neighborhood. And that's not to say that leopards are criminals, but they are, of course, if you happen to be a baboon. And leopards will kill small baboons. Uh, very un I mean, they don't kill baboons in this area a lot, but it does happen from time to time, and baboons are not tolerant of it. Then, the male gave chase, and we both, Viam and I, both think that he got hold of, Shongi, of uh, Hosanna there. And I'm pretty sure that, Shongi, uh, that Hosanna gave him a bite, gave him a slap, and after that slap, Got, made the baboon let him go, ran up the tree and the baboon went up after him and then tried to grab him out of the tree and he managed to fight the baboon off. And that's what happened. Then things calmed down, Karula's gone back to her kill. And that is the lay of the land, Jason. I don't see a leopard around here. Just have an update from Andrew. I'm just going to try and find out what he said again. Sorry, Andrew, can you go again to that update? I'm afraid I missed it. <clears throat> oh, interesting update from Andrew. Copy, thank you. He's, uh, he's found a mvula. Hmm? Alarm calls. Let's just listen. There. He's right. There's an impala alarming behind us. Okay, copy, thanks. We've just got some impala alarming around here. I wonder if it's not the little leopard. Let's set up through that way. We can go back to Karula, everybody, because they've made this a space there. All right, while we have a look here, let's head back to the lions with Taylor, and we'll keep you posted with this rather difficult situation. Karula hasn't arrived so much as we've found, well, we haven't found her, Aubrey found her and followed her. And she's pulled this carcass some distance. We're a good 200 meters, 600 feet from where we saw this kill this morning. And I think she's decided to take it towards a tree where she can stash it, and then she can go and fetch the cubs. I think she's almost said to them, you stay where you are. I'll get this thing off the ground, away from the baboons and the place where they are. She's dragged it straight into Juma. So she's pulled it away from Torchwood around where those baboons focus. And I think she's, oh, she's calling, mm, no, she's not calling, she's just breathing heavily. And I think she's going to go and hoist it into a tree so that there's some safety for all concerned. You can see how heavily she's breathing. It's still quite a lot of impala left. It's not a male, it's a female impala. I think what I heard Brent say last night was probably that it's an adult impala as opposed to adult male impala. It's got no horns on it. She's just waiting, I think, trying to maybe ascertain where the cubs are. So I, I, have can't, I haven't told you where we are. If you picture where the first, 
where the kill was, where we saw them. Um, the kill was basically sitting just inside Torchwood. Now what she's done is pulled it south and east, and sorry, south and west into Juma by about 600 feet, like I say. The male cub, Hosanna, is off to the north of where we are now, probably equidistant from the kill, so about 600 meters to the north, 600 feet, 200 meters to the north. Don't know where Shongila is at this stage. I think she's further south. We had some Impala alarm calling and we went to investigate, but what I think that was, was probably them spotting her dragging this thing across the road. You see definitely no horns, well, or ears anymore on that Impala. She's there. there is a large marula tree, and I'm going to take the chance, everybody. She's heading towards it. I'm going to take the chance of not heading towards her, but going around the side and seeing if we can't get to a position by the tree so that when she does get there, we can see her pull it up. We also, of course, don't want to be too close to her because we don't want to affect her ability to hear the cubs, which may or may not be caught. I don't think they'll call her. I think she might try and call them, though. I think they will remain completely silent right now. There's a bit of a small gap here. Hold on, everybody. Hello, Alina. You're wondering why we negotiate through this narrow spot. She's going straight to the same tree. Alina, you want to know if the baboons carry disease and if they'd bitten Hosanna, whether they'd have uh, infected him with something. It's possible. It is possible. But remember, the animals out here have profoundly powerful immune systems. So I think that he would have got over that. Which one do you think she's going to pick, Vim? Hmm? Looks like she's not going to pick either. Yeah, I just confess I agree with you. Just going to ease our way in here. There's a great amount of artfark activity that goes on in this area. There, yeah, she's going to take it up this one. This is it's not the best view, everybody, but I think it's about the best that we're going to get. Let me move quickly, give her a chance. While well, she has catches her breath. It's still very, very heavy. I'm going to just quieten my voice a little bit here now. She feels it's slightly too heavy for her to take up the tree just at the moment. So she's going to sort of stash it underneath that thick bush there. And I think once she's caught her breath, because she's dragged it quite a long way, I think then she might try and put it up into the tree. Well done, Mom. What a morning you've had. What a life you've had. Hello, Lauren. Another one that is difficult to answer. Thank you for it. You say if the 
Baboons had hurt the cubs or Karula, would the reserve have stepped in to help? The short answer is no. The long answer is probably. Um, you know, this is an iconic leopard, and she brings a lot of tourists into this area very often. And I think what you'd find is that although there's a general policy of non-interference, if there had been an easily solvable injury, like, you know, maybe the baboon had torn a piece of fur off the back of her, and, you know, with a simple stitching job it could have been fixed, I think you'll find they would have probably called the vet. But that is not policy. So the official stance would be no, there would be no interference. The unofficial one, I think, would have been if it was a seemingly easily solvable issue, then they would have got the vet in. Michael, you're wondering if this talent of getting away from baboons runs in the family because Karula, at least Tandi, managed to escort her two cubs away from the baboons last time. I think it's largely, largely, um, I think it's largely instinctual. I don't believe that it's, it's necessarily genetic. Um, I think it's almost purely... Sorry, I'm just listening. She's going to fetch the cubs now. We're not going to follow her. I'm going to let her be. Because I think that she needs a little bit of time to go and fetch the cubs. And I think it might be worth just sitting here and waiting. Oh, this is amazing. So, Michael, no, I think it's purely instinctual stuff that, I mean, it's, it's almost, Michael, like she's, they split, you know, it's, it's hardly like she, it looked almost like Tundi was trying to chase, I don't know if any of you saw that, but it looked like Tundi perhaps tried to lure the baboons away from the cubs. I'm not convinced that that's what happened. Um, and certainly with this, these three, they all ran in different directions. Karula's on the periphery, but remember, if she dies, those cubs will die, and so she won't take the risk. She simply will not take the risk that she could die as well. Um, and then a nice one, I forget the name, sorry, Kirsten, you'll have to come back with that, about whether or not her age is going to make a difference. It's Bill, thank you, Bill about whether her age is going to make it difficult for her to take kills like this up a tree or not. Yeah, eventually, you know, she gets a little bit older, it's definitely going to make a difference. But I don't think she's, I don't think yet. I mean, I've seen her hoist a male impala before. I think if you're all happy, I think we're just going to sit right here, if that's okay, and we'll just see if she doesn't come back with the cubs. So while we do that, let's head to the lions, find out what they're doing with the inimitable Taylor, and make sure this time that she tells you her, <laughs> her buffalo story without the language she used. She came back, everybody, and she's just calling. I'm sure the cubs are just behind her. She was walking back and she turned around and looked and turned around and looked and then called. And then she came back to the carcass and tossed some leaves on it. And I'm pretty sure that the cubs are just a little bit skittish to move into open ground. And between us, that doesn't look like it from where you're looking, but behind that thicket there's an open area. And I think they're just a little nervous at the moment. They or one, or I don't know. And when I say I don't know if there's more than one, I just simply mean 
in this particular instance. I'm pretty sure they're both fine. She came right back here. She's going off onto the termite mound. I think there's a termite mound behind there. I don't want to move. I think she's going onto the termite mound to have a look see. I just don't want to move and make a noise. Well, that wasn't particularly exciting, was it, Liam? We can. Should we have a little move around, Vimpy? We'll just do a little, a little sort of foray around there and see. She's gone quite far, so we don't. We're not going to disturb her. Cotton in Colorado. You're wondering whether. Karula would have made sure that Shongile was all right before she went back to the kill to fetch it. Um, um, you know, I don't think so. I, I don't know that she knew where uh, the female was. I'm not convinced that she knew. Uh, but like I say, the thing is, watching like we watch, the leopards and lions will not risk their own lives for their, their youngsters. They can't afford to, because it, if they die, their cubs die anyway. And so there's no point in them risking their own lives. And so they are not, you know, she would never have risked her, she would nece wouldn't necessarily have checked on the cubs before she went back to feed. That said, I don't know that that's true. I mean, I don't know that she wouldn't have checked, so maybe she had a look and to see whether Shongile was okay, I'm not sure. It's interesting, these, are, these discussions all go into that um, area where we talk about animal emotions and animal feelings and, and uh, how much those drive what they do. And, of course, the big thing for scientists for so many years was well, animals don't feel anything, they don't have emotions. And that was patently, obviously untrue to anybody who had a house cat or a dog, which obviously feel things. And I've been reading quite a lot about it lately. And far from being a kind of completely anthropomorphic response, she's gone off that way and Aubrey's following her there. So I think we'll just gently trickle along behind. Far from being a kind of anthropomorphic uh, impression of our own feelings onto animals or uh, reflecting our own feelings, emotions play a hugely strong um, evolutionary role in how animals react to certain situations. And the emotion that a leopardess would feel for the dangers that her babies feel or that her, that her babies are under is hugely important because if she didn't feel that she'd be almost psychopathic and she wouldn't look after them she would feel no need to look after them and so I'm pretty sure that what she felt during that um, you know during that attack from the baboons was was terror and uh, I think it probably quite closely approximated what a, a mother human would have felt with her children under such threat and remember that a human being and a hyena and a wild dog, they will take far more risk than a leopard will. And so will a lion, because of course they live in a group. So they know that if, you, if they get injured, they'll still be able to eat. Now I don't know what Aubrey's doing. I'm just going to call him quickly. Orbs, have you got visual there? Okay. What she's doing is she's gone back to where the first, where the kill was, uh, and she's calling them there. So she obviously doesn't know where they are. And Aubrey's leaving the area now. Okay, 
I think what we're going to do, everybody, I'm not going to go and sit with her. I want her to be able to hear what's going on. We're going to go back to the kill and wait there. While we do that, let's head across to Steph and find out what he's managed to step on with his fairly substantial size 11s. Well, she has made an appearance, everybody, but she's made it with only one cub, and it's the male who we knew was okay. Now, I don't think that's to say that she hasn't... that the... that the... The female is in trouble. So that's little Hosanna. And I I just think she doesn't know where Shongile is. She's calling still. So she's got one of them in tow. And she wouldn't uh, you know what? You know what's happened here, I think. She wouldn't have taken him to go and find the other one. So once she found one, she would have come back here and she'll, she might dump him here and then go looking for her. That could easily happen. So I don't, I think it's definitely much too soon to worry about Shungile at this stage. So he's going to have a bit of well-deserved meal after his horrible shock this morning. Interesting to see now if she goes off straight away. No, she's going to have a bit of a rest. So this is quite strange. Or maybe it isn't, I don't know. more you postulate about these things, the more nonsense you tend to talk. Yeah. Hello Faith, what a nice question from you and it's, uh, it's the opposite of what you'll think. You said to you say, when I first started doing this job, was it difficult for me not to try and help the animals or not to want to help the animals? Um, no, it wasn't, because I came from a science-based background, and so I was very kind of, well, I was religious about science, if you like. Um, I have modified my views a lot more now, and, I mean, I've seen the obvious emotions that animals have, and I, in turn, feel a lot more emotional about the animals that we see out here. And so my inclination to interfere, although I would still fight that inclination, I must confess to you, although, so my inclination to interfere sometimes would be quite strong, but I would still fight it. So it's actually, it's, it's harder for me now to detach myself emotionally than it's ever been. She's still looking off in that direction. I wonder where little Shongile is. Hopefully by this afternoon she would have appeared. But what I think we'll do, let's sit here for... Let me just check how much time we left. Okay, in fact, I'm probably... Let's quickly head back to Taylor. She's got something really interesting to show you. You thought that you'd seen the last of Steph. Well, you haven't. He's just up ahead, everybody. Um, but that is not the point of what I really want to say. That is that we left uh, Karula. We went to see if we could see Shongile, perhaps in one of the trees around about where they were chased. We didn't see anything there, and so we left. They, I'm pretty sure, are going to be there this afternoon, and no doubt Brent or Jamie will go have a look at them this afternoon and see if they can't find what's happening there. I'm pretty sure she's going to leave Horsana to eat and she'll go off and see if she can find Shungile.